Welcome to Red, White, and Bethune. We are Jen, Kyle, Ben, Molly, Eli, and we travel with our four dogs in our 1983 Silver Eagle bus. Come along as we show you America through our lens. Hi, my name is Kyle and I'm with Red, White, and Bethune. We're going to be installing two of these 12K mini split air conditioners. A huge shout out to Mr. Cool for making this video possible and providing the uh, units for this bus. So what we're going to be doing is we have a 1983 Eagle bus conversion. We have two of these units. We're going to try to put them in our center bay and run one of the inside units to the front of the bus, one to the back where they blow together. This is something we wanted to do for a long time to save on power and have more efficiency while we're off grid. The good thing about this set right here is a DIY kit, so no professionals needed. Everything's basically plug and play. The uh, line sets come pre-charged, but everything's color coded. You see you plug it in, wire everything up and install it, and it should be good to go. Let's get to work. Before we get too far along, let's go over what's inside each box. We have our air handler that is mounted inside. Then we have our Mr. Cool mini stat, we also have the USB port controller, and we have a battery operated remote. These are the tape pieces that go over the condenser lines as well as the foam to prevent the moisture buildup. These are the filters that are gonna go inside the air handler inside. Then we have the mounting bracket for the air handler. We also have our line set that is pre-charged and connects to both the air handler and the air condenser. Last but not least is the condenser unit that is gonna go below in our bay. Finally gonna get to do something I really wanted to do since we bought a bus to install mini split AC units on our bus. We're very fortunate to be sponsored by Mr. Cool and we're gonna be installing two mini split units in our metal wet bay but right now i have to crawl in here and basically clear out anything to the right of the drain hose there i will hopefully be able to fit them in there with room to spare <laughs> but i gotta get redo some water lines i'm gonna re relocate the propane over to the next bay and just run a hose over to the hot water heater because that's really the only thing we run off propane and other than that it's just relocating a couple water lines and hopefully i'll be able to get the units in here today and finish up tomorrow that's the plan anyway we shall see yep what we're doing now is we are removing the old water filters. We're relocating the propane tanks over to the other bay because we've got to make room for the mini split units down below. And we've got to adjust some things to be able to do that. Kyle's redirecting the water lines. He is moving the hot water heater so that we can make plenty of space for these new beautiful units. What we're gonna to try to do now is we're gonna to try to mount our first mounting bracket for the inside unit. We're actually doing it on our back wall of our bus. We're actually in the part back of the bus now and the unit is gonna face forward and blow air that way. We're trying to get this as centered as we possibly can and kind of figure out what level or what height we want to go with. So we have our dead center mark between our lights because again, it's a bus, nothing square, but at least want, you know, aesthetically, these this is going to be the closest point. It's about an inch off dead center of the bus too. And I think I'm just going to get it up there. We're going to get it straight as we can and screw it up. So we're working on our head unit, we got our plate mounted. That's the main thing we're trying to figure out is how we want to run the lines. You have to, you have two coolant lines, you have a drain line, then you have a communication and power line. It's all got to be ran down to the outside unit. So we're just trying to figure out the best possible way to do it. Again, we are limited on the amount of line we do have. I'm trying to cut out a little side part here because what it is is you can swing it the line set this way we're probably just going to run it honestly on the outside we do this wall covering here and it kind of covers everything up anyway it's one less step we're going to have to do as far as drilling holes and cutting through the plywood now that we've got it all mounted up now we've got to run this line set all along the bus along the walls and try to hide it as much as possible along the way. You know, the one good thing about having a bus is we actually built this bus basically from the ground up on the inside. So we know where everything is. We can kind of, you know, fit things as we need them. It makes it a little easier kind of when you're doing this sort of stuff. You know where everything is, all the holes, all the compartments and all that stuff. So hopefully it'll make it a little easier to get this where we need it to go. We got the unit mounted. I built this little channel right here 
here to run across our roof to kind of hide the line set. So the plan is we're gonna run the line set out of the unit behind the wall, the grass wall right there. And then we're gonna run it all the way down here. And I have an old unused air vent. We're gonna snake it through there. Probably gonna actually just run it through this here because it's already here and it's, it's already holding some other stuff. I'm gonna let it escape right here. Again, I have another unused air vent going into my closet and it's gonna come out there. And I'm gonna snake it down and feed it through there ultimately down to the unit that's my plan i should have plenty of line set doing it this way you know that was another thing we had to be mindful of the whole time is line set because we only had 25 feet it's 40 foot bus and we're trying to split the difference on two so yeah it's 50 foot total but you're also having to run up and down and sideways i think we'll be okay on this one i want to go ahead and get the line set completely ran know it's going to work and then we're going to move on to the front one this is definitely at least a two-person job. We are doing some teamwork here. We've decided that we're gonna feed the line up through the bottom to match it up there to make it the easiest to get through our bus with the, the constraints that we're working with. We're gonna grab this line over here and feed it up through the top. You ready? So we got it all ran to where we needed to go. This is our what we got left. So luckily that was just about enough. The unit's gonna go right here. What we're gonna do now, I guess, is go ahead and try to run the front one and get everything hooked up. Now I've got my base board mounted. Nice solid hardwood board mounted into stick metal and plywood up here. So it should be plenty, plenty strong. We gotta mount our next plate up here. Try to figure out where we're gonna put it exactly. plan is to take our line set, run it through this box here, and then run it along this wall of cabinets right here to our laundry area, and then run it straight down to the outdoor condenser unit. I think it's gonna be quite a, quite a journey. We got our bracket mounted, we've got our hole draw, drilled for our line set. Now we're gonna unswivel the line set, unroll it, we'll roll it out flat, because we have some kind of tricky obstacles to get through to successfully get this down to the condenser unit outside. Our next step now is we're going to be running the lines from the bottom up. It just seemed to work better for our configuration. Had we done this when we first built the bus, it would be so much easier. But now we're having to work around a lot of angles, a lot of issues. And so we are going to be running the line from the bottom up to the top because sometimes you just have to wing it and pivot because things aren't working right. So let's get to it. We went ahead and ran our drain line to the air handler in the back. We made sure it was at a downward angle and it comes out the floor of the bus and out onto the ground. Well, this thing has really been kicking my butt. We finally got our line set ran the way we needed it. We got it coming out right here. We ended up coming here and I'm actually just connecting one of the coolant lines here and I gotta run the other one. Once we get it done, I'm gonna screw it down. I built a little stand here to put it on to raise it up a little bit because I was I was honestly that close on my line set so I had to do that. I'm just trying to get them connected right now. Then I'm gonna come through and do some cleanup work, get this thing mounted and then we'll try to turn it on. But I'll bring you guys back in once I get these connected back up. All right, I got the communication plug hooked up. I got my two lines finally hooked up. Mr. Cool makes it really simple with the way they do this. They have a diagram right here. It's very, you know, color coded and very specific. Everything's numbered, so really simple. I'm gonna get the other one to the other unit, the rear unit to this point, and then shut the bus down and hook the power up for both of them. That way I don't have to shut the bus down twice as my beautiful bride so eloquently told me not to do. It's all right, it's, it's here. I wanna make sure it powers, everything runs right, and then I'm going to secure it and then clean my lines up, kind of fix everything up where it looks presentable. We got everything hooked up. We got everything, all the lines clean, got everything ran right. We had just enough line set. It was scaringly close. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. Just a couple tips I've got on that is definitely measure it out or try to do your best configuration before you order your unit. Know how much line set you have to have. This one came at 25 foot. I, they have them up 25, 35 and on up, I think up to even hundred foot. But that's definitely something I wish I would have looked into a little closer before I did it. But it's, I think it cleaned up pretty good. 
for ventilation on the units, on the outdoor units, on the condensers, we had to end up putting them in two separate bays because we need to have the ability for the hot air to blow out from the bus. It just wasn't gonna work. I, I talked to several people that have done this and it just seemed like really my only option. Yes, I could have fit both in that middle bay, but I don't think I would have had the ventilation. So this is what the route we ended up having to take. I do have a couple tips though, if you do decide to do this. One, make sure your indoor unit is completely level. That's gonna be a big thing as far as drainage. They, they specify that quite a bit in the instruction manual. Make sure your unit is very level. Second one, drain pipe. Really pay attention to your drain pipe. You can't have any kinks. It's gotta be at a constant downward slope. That way it drains properly. We're actually having some problems with this one. We had our drain line, it wasn't properly, and it was creating a vacuum and dumping water outside of the unit on the ground. Great thing about Mr. Cool, I let him know within a day I had a call from a tech guy. Yeah, this is your problem. We addressed it, we pulled it apart, we ran a new drain line and it works. We haven't had a problem since. Definitely pay attention to your drain line. Make sure you have it on a downward angle at all times. And really the final thing left to do is turn it on. We really are loving these units. It's amazing how quiet they are, how efficient they are, how well they cool. I didn't expect that. These things cool this room down in, uh, in, in, like, in just a minute or two. Same with the front. Super glad I did this. It's by far the best air conditioner you can put in your RV. I want to say a huge thank you to Mr. Cool for making this video possible and supplying us with these AC units. I really love it. High quality product, super simple. Anybody can do it. Putting it in a bus has got its challenges, but it can be done. And I honestly think this is the best RV AC unit you're gonna buy today. Thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you in the next video.